Hey ho. So I'm going to make you hopefully a nice informative video that isn't too depressing on hypochondria because I'm aware that my videos are becoming a bit like depressing rambles about my life but any and less helpful. But I'm trying to be gonna try and be informative and as least sad as possible. Um health anxiety is actually amazingly common. Um it occurs in varying degrees of severity. Some people live with it in quite um in quite mild form for most of their lives, you know. But and they don't even really know they've got it, to be honest. They just think it's normal worry. But other people like me, um, the health anxiety becomes very, very serious and debilitating to their lives. Um, hypochondriasis is just the longer medical term for um, health anxiety, a more severe form of health anxiety. Um, but I tend to call it hypochondria because I can't really spell hypochondriasis, to be honest. Um, it's got lots of S's and lots of I's. And, ugh. Anyway. Um, it takes a lot of different forms for different people. It can be anything from just having a constant worry that you're going to get ill. Um, or, in my case, it's interpreting symptoms within your body whether they truly exist or not and interpreting them as something very very serious when it's not um it's quite a difficult emotion and to to describe to you but a good example would be if I got a headache and the reason why I got that headache was because I hadn't slept the night before and as a consequence drunk a lot of coffee. That's why I had a headache. And even though I know that's why I've got the headache, the anxiety half of me cannot stop myself thinking I have a headache because some, somewhere I've got a brain tumour. And these aren't just sort of little worries that that come into your head and then are out again. These are like all-consuming proper fears that take you over to the point where you are convinced that you are either ill or dying. Um, luckily, for me, I got into CBD quite quickly, CBT quite quickly, within a few months, but some people live with this for for years without really, without really identifying that it's a real problem, but it is. Um, I'm trying to be positive here, but I'm finding it so hard because this is such a huge, um, this is a very big part of my life and it's pretty much wrecked the last few years of my life, which is why it's difficult for me to talk about um, in a positive light. Um, it started off for me when I got a couple of swollen lymph nodes on the back of my neck, and those came up because I think I don't really know why, but I probably had a cold or some infection or something. But they were really tiny, they were like four or five millimetres long, and immediately I thought that it was cancer and I just convinced myself that I had cancer and I was in like my own little anxiety bubble and I was giving myself um, more symptoms of illness like I couldn't eat and I had lots of headaches and I couldn't really sleep properly and all that was because of the anxiety but ironically that made me think that I was ill in different ways like it's just stupid but it was all the anxiety, basically. Um, I went to doctors, and he told me that it was that it they were swollen lymph nodes. They're not serious at all. Just wait for them to go down. 
but I didn't believe him. And that's one of the main symptoms of real hypochondria is if you go to the doctors but you cannot accept what they tell you and you're not reassured at all and I wasn't reassured. I kept it on with my um with my massive preoccupation with the little clothes on the back of my neck and I was so obsessed, it's almost sort of O C D type. I was so obsessed with just touching them over and over again is that I actually had a friction burn on the back of my neck from the constant touching. Um, so that was the trigger. I went back to the doctors and got a second opinion and only then did I start to really um, be able to stop touching these lymph nodes on the back of my neck. So that was the trigger, but after that I slowly became obsessed with everything on my head and then it sort of went down to a more general fear of illness in the rest of my body. And I, I thought that things like lumps and bumps that were completely normal, that were anatomical, that were part of your body, I thought were wrong, that were um, anything that wasn't symmetrical, anything that felt odd that I'd never really noticed before, I thought was something really serious. And it started on my head and it just carried on down my body. And one of the biggest, one of the really bad things that happened was that I became obsessed with my weight, not in an eating disorder kind of way, not in that I wanted to lose weight, in that I didn't want to lose weight, because I knew that losing weight quickly um, indicated quite a serious illness. Um, and through my hours and hours and hours of internet research on this, I knew that if you lost more than 5% of your body weight in a month, then that indicated something that you needed to get checked out. So I calculated what 5% of my body weight would be, and then I weighed myself 3, 4, 5 times a day, and kept a note of every fluctuation, up or down. If it went up, I was happy, if it went down, I went into immediate massive anxiety, phase even bigger than I already was and um, basically forced myself to eat to make I, I forced myself to eat masses because I knew that that would make the number on the scales read higher and even though I knew that that wasn't my real weight I had to I had to see a high number just to be happy even though I knew it wasn't real, which is really odd, but... And I had to force myself to eat because at that point the anxiety was so bad I didn't have an appetite, so... And... And in order to get over that I made my mum hide the scales. And I still haven't really weighed myself in a year and a half, really. Um, and I didn't have a mirror, a full length mirror in my room, a mirror at all, for maybe two or three months because I used to just stand there looking and checking that everything looked fine and that nothing looked odd. <clears throat> um, so that's hypochondria. It sort of gets worse when I'm in a bad, when I'm on a holiday. I, as much as I hated school when I was there, I always used to, after about a week of holiday, I used to start not having much to do and thinking too much. And that was when the hypochondria really kicked in, and that's why I've been struggling for the last few weeks. Like, until a few weeks ago, I could practically forget that hypochondria ever existed. Yeah, I used to sort of avoid TV programmes about certain illnesses and newspaper articles because I knew it would trigger me. But, apart from that, I had very few health worries at all. But, in the few weeks I've been off school, and haven't really had much to do. I've been having all these renewed fears, exactly the same as I used to the last time. I've been thinking I've had breast cancer. I actually gave myself bruises in that area from checking so often. Um, just yesterday, I thought that I, my throat was constricting. I couldn't breathe. I was just um, 